Uh, please welcome Maciej. Thank you, thank you. Mm, I think we can get a few more minutes so people will finish entering. Yeah, that will be the best way so nobody will be have any problems. Uh, guys, just like to remind you that uh, we have um, like QMO conference tag, uh, and please use it uh, in order to mark your photos with our tag. It's like it's here, QMO conference. Okay, I think we can start. Um, so I am Maciej Verodek. I am uh, leader of test automation community at Objectivity. I have blog called The Broken Test, and some time ago I have done small nougat package to deal with the tables because I don't like the way how Selenium is dealing with them. Um, so we are today to talk about how Selenium finds elements. First question is, why do you care? I know you care because you are here, but sometimes it's worth to think about it. I like this quote from Jackie Stewart. You don't have to be an engineer to be racing driver, but you have to do. Uh, you, but you do have to have mechanical sympathy. What it means? You don't have to be as skilled to write, you know, Selenium. No, it's not. But knowing what's going on there, it's helpful when we have problems, when we go into the situations when something is happening that we don't understand. Even Simon Stewart, the creator of WebDriver, is saying. If Selenium is not doing what you wanted, it means that you either don't understand how Selenium is working or how your application is working. So today we are here to take a little look at how Selenium is finding the elements. Our story starts something like five years ago. I was, on the, I was leaving some company, but my last job there was to prepare POC for the automation framework for one of the project. The new guy came, he will be taking over me, so I was giving the, doing the knowledge transfer. And we're looking at the locators. I was using different types. I was using IDs, I was using names, I was using CSS selectors. He didn't like that. He said, let's go with the XPath. My reaction was, why? I can see quite a lot of problems with going with the XPath. And he was like, hey, you worry too much. XPath is the easiest. You can do everything with the XPath. You can even find element by text with the XPath. You cannot do with anything else that. Besides, they all work the same under the hood. I seen already inconsistency there. So are they the same or not? If they are the same, they will all be doing the same thing. And they are not. So I didn't agree with him. And we are both people that like to experiment. So what we do, so first, how was that? I was that that you are starting with ID, then if there is no ID, you're going into the name or the class, then CSS, then XPath or the links if you have no other option. So you can see I wasn't very keen on the XPath. So we decided to do small experiment. We have taken our code, one moment, we have taken our code and started to doing some experimentation. This is not the code of our framework back then. This is something I have uh, just done for this presentation. This is not example of the good code. Just to say, this is code throw away type. So you are doing it once, it worked, done what you wanted, you are throwing it away. It's not meant for maintenance. Um, the code and the presentation it ha itself is at my GitHub, so you can find it there. Um, okay, so in the code, there is not much happening. First, we are set up our driver. I am using local web page. Why? Because you know how the internet is in the places like that. I didn't want it to fail in the middle of presentation. Plus, latency. Since we are taking a look how something works, we will be, that will be a problem for us. Then, we have some logger. The tests itself are very simple. We are doing the locators using different type, and then we, are we have method that will be measuring the time. Why time? Because without looking deep into the code, this is the easiest way to see if the elements are acting similar or not. The times will be, the times will be similar. If they are working completely differently, you will see some difference in the times. Oh, sorry. So how the method works? Um, it's actually simple. We are taking locator, 
we are doing our loop and in a loop we are finding the element. Before finding element we are starting the stopwatch, then we're finishing the stopwatch and we are adding result to our list. Then we have a function that is um, doing the uh, generation of the logs. So let's run it. It will take a few seconds. As you can see, it's going to the page, it's doing something. <coughs> Sorry. And it's going to the next one. Next time, looking for using different locator this time. And it will do it two more times. As it happens, we can start to take a look at our logs. and the last iteration. Okay. Let's remove something here so it will be much more readable. Okay. So, average time for the class was 6.5 millisecond and minimal time was 5 sec uh, millisecond maximal was 16 and similar and similar thing will be happening for the others for the css we can see the times are not much different and or strangely id actually has max time going either up the xpath where is the xpath what happened here oh xpath has the, the bigger time, the biggest time. Of course, the difference between now and then is the results right now are much more consistent. The differences are actually very small. We can see on the peaks that there is difference, but on average time, the difference is minimal. So my friend wasn't completely convinced about what I'm telling him. He was like, dude, this is not actually proper scientific experiment. We can see something but we are not seeing much of stuff here. We need to go deeper. We are still in the time when the MEMS can be used, so we are using MEMS. Okay, right now we could go into the logs, but logs are boring, we just looked at some text file. So we're going to do something much more interesting, we are going to use Postman to control WebDriver. Have you, any of you tried ever to do that? Yeah, this is actually something that not many people don't. You can do it, it's fun, but usually it's a little pointless. I need to activate my Chrome driver. So now my Chrome driver is waiting for me what I will do with it. First thing first, we want to create the session. So. We are sending the body with information, activate some Chrome for me. As you can see, it opened the browser. The another interesting thing is, it returned me to me lots of information, including the ID of the session, which we will actually need. Because if we want to go to the page, we have to give it the ID of our session. A moment. Okay. Oh, sorry, you don't see the body of the request. Basically, we are sending in the body information URL and URL of our resource. We went to the page. So how do we find the elements? Again, we need our ID. I will put the ID already in our other um, requests so it will be faster. And in the body of request, we have to see, say, what are we using? In this case, we'll be using ID and button value. So here is something that is much more interesting. 
Let's look at the result. We didn't get the button. We get some ID. Why? Any of you ever thought what's happening when you are debugging the element? That when you want to ext ext extract the information of your found web element, what's happening? You need to wait because your computer doesn't have this information. I this information is still in the web service, the server, and it's answering for everything, for text, for every property. To show you that, we're going to use that value. So, we got the information about our button. What happens when we ask for something that doesn't exist? Stale element exception. Our favorite exception. I hate you so much. Okay, um, because this is what happens. When you had some element and something changes in, in the DOM, he doesn't know it uh, again. The ID is pointing nowhere. So the same is here. If you're asking for something that doesn't exist, Stale element exception. Maybe there was something like this, but I don't know anymore. Okay, now we're going to close our browser. And we don't need this anymore. Yeah, sorry, it's not here. In Chrome logs, you will see basically the same information. I won't go into analyzing here, but it's worth to check from time to time. You can see a lot of stuff here, if you have the setup of the log. Okay. Let's take also a look what's going in the code itself. You can download the Selenium code. We will take a look at two implementations. We will take a look at the implementation of the C sharp and then on the <coughs> sorry, on the Java implementation. So basically all drivers are inheriting from remote web driver. So let's look at find element. As you can see, if there is no by, it is returning the null, <coughs> sorry, null exception. And in other cases, it's using the find element from the by. Here we have the by. The by is working a little different. It's using the context. It has the proper functions for each context. And we'll be looking at the context for ID. So what's happening here? It is using interface. Oh, let's put it higher. It's using something called find element by ID. So it's sending us somewhere else. Fortunately, the search is doing magic. What's happening here? What is happening here? We have the specification compliance. If that's happening, we are using CSS selector. We'll be talking what's happening here in a few moments. But right now, what we are more interested in is the bottom, the ID, ID. This is basically using what I showed you. This is making the call that I showed you before. And it looks very similar in Java. In Java, <coughs> you have the find element by ID using. The difference is here, the interface is marked by deprecated. 
we'll be talking about it later. So this is just proof. It was working, looking completely differently when we were discussing the subject. <coughs> At this point, my friend was like, you know what? I understand, you are right. This is not working as I was expecting. We are going with the CSS. We can do it this way. We are not going deeper. But I wanted to go deeper. Because, well, we know how the browser is, how the, our code is working, but what is happening in the Chrome driver? Here, the problem starts. What problem? It's called, I don't speak C++. <laughs> I had only half semester of C++ on my studies. It was so long ago. I can say that something is happening here, but I completely don't understand it. But the most important thing is happening here. Again, there is W3C compliance and there are some specific <coughs> code here. And there is something more interesting on the bottom. There are the atoms. What are the atoms? Unfortunately, the most exciting part of the presentation is over. We're going into the theory town. So if you have pillows, take them. If you have some coloring books, take them. If you have something to do on your phones, this is the time because we're going back to the past. In 2004, Jason Huggins created Selenium. Later, it will be known as Selenium Core. At that time, it was just a collection of the JavaScripts that allow you to control the browser. Do you see the problem? Back then, if you tried to use it remotely, you would get the problem with same origin policy. You still will get problem with same origin policy, so they created Selenium Remote Control Server, Selenium RC, which works basically as the way to control each browser and Selenium core. Difference here is you can use different languages. No longer JavaScript, you can use a lot of other languages. Around that time, Simon Stewart started working on WebDriver. Why WebDriver? Because in testing, we have different testing doubles. You heard about spies, you heard about mocks, stops. Driver is similar to stop. In case of stop, your code is acting on the stop. In case of driver, the driver is acting on your code. So the problem is here, we don't have driver because the driver is the user at the web. So we have to simulate him. That's why it's called web driver. Personally, I think it's human driver is better name or slave driver, but I can see the consequences politically for using that kind of the names. And now atoms. This is the point <coughs> the atoms have come into the play. There is one problem. I don't know origin of the atoms, if they came from web driver or if they came from Selenium. I tried to find this information. I couldn't find the source that would be definitive that this is from where they came. I am thinking they came from the Selenium, but I'm not 100% sure. Basically, the goal of the atoms were atomic scripts that would allow us to perform the options needed for Selenium, like find element, find elements, fire, get size, execute scripts, clear, that kind of stuff. So they would allow us for much simpler control. But then Selenium and WebDriver merge. At this point, there is one change in the idea. The different languages use the JSON wire protocol to talk with the drivers. This part is the same um, for us all. No matter who you are, you are using the JSON wire protocol and it's talking with different drivers because the drivers expect the functionality there. But this part, Simon Stewart said, I don't care. I want the browser developers to take care of this part. They will be using it. You have the atoms, you can start with the atoms, you can do whatever you want. And those bastards did whatever they want. <coughs> but first thing is, we can see one thing. Selenium is not finding elements. 
Selenium is politely asking the server, who is asking the browser and few other things on the way, to get it the element. Yes. Yes. Um, but how does it happen? If you are not asleep yet, we are going into the documentation land. Now, this is the stuff that it's making me asleep. When I was reading these documentations, I had problems. I will admit, I am dyslectic. I have problem with reading, for example, mathematical formulas. I love math, but the math formulas are not from me. And check out this. The find element command is used to find an element in the current browser context that can be used as the web element context for the future element centric commands. That's a mouthful. What it means? If you have your browser, the driver will find element and you can use that element. Problem is, in documentation, it's like legal language. Every word has mean one thing and one thing only. You cannot have here any uncentrality. Everything has to be concrete here. Um, if you want the stuff, in the end of the, my presentation, there are links to all the sources. Uh, but there is information about I different, sorry, about different strategies. And again, what happened to ID? What happened to the class names? But let's look what it's saying about the <coughs> CSS selector. Basically, it's using something called query selector all. It's a function of the DOM, DOM and object model. So this is the stuff that front-end developers are using. Same thing happens for the <coughs> link text and partial link text. And then this is basically table for all of them. All of them using the query selector all, except the get element by tag and XPath. XPath is using evaluate. So looking at it, my friend was wrong back then, but now he's kind of getting right because most of the stuff is used by query selector all except the XPath that he wanted to use because he's, of course, different. And we are going to this place, the visually free compliance, because that was my problem. I was taught this way, but to that, that moment, I never was like, why I was taught this way? What is the reason behind? And you know, I haven't found actual reason. The only thing what I found is this article about choosing location strategy from the time of Selenium RC. It's not up to date. And basically, even it doesn't state straight that you can use this order. It's only saying that these are some possible strategies and the X path is not recommended. So, but <coughs> those functionalities existed. There was JSON wire protocol, and in that time, all those functionalities were supported. Problem is, JSON wire uh, protocol is no more. Right now, Selenium is using WebDriver wire protocol. And it doesn't have the functionality. What does it mean for you? Selenium 4 will be standard compliant. Selenium 4 won't have class, name, or ID. They will, won't have quite a lot of other things. But these three things are going away. And depending on the language you are using, there are different ways they're dealt with them. As you can see, C Sharp did it this way, that they are doing wrappers for that. Java is removing them completely. And so you may be expecting it that sometime, if you will be switching to four, you will have to do some changes in your code. Okay, but we still don't know how does it work. So what's happening that I'm getting this element? Now we're going even deeper. Now we are talking at the browser. And they are doing it completely different because each browser has the completely freedom what to do. For example, in Chrome, they are using Chrome Dev uh, DevTools protocol. Previously, it was known as Chrome Debug protocol. You are probably using it if you are using Chrome because the DevTools after F12 are using this protocol. They are talking with the browser using the DevTool protocol. If you are using Cypress or Puppeteer, those tools are built on this protocol. That's why they only sub support the Chrome. In case of Firefox, it's a little different. Firefox started with the atoms, but then they said, hmm, you know, 
Those atoms are kind of useful even for our stuff, not only for WebDriver. With time, they started moving the protocols, adding the additional functionality, and it was created into Marionette. To be honest, when I check the documentation, there are still a few atoms that exist, but most of the stuff was moved into their Marionette protocol. But how does it work? Again, I tried to look at the code, but the problem is this is the level I completely don't understand anything. I talked to some of my front-end friends and they said, dude, chill out. Everything now on this level works the same. You shouldn't be looking even at this code. You shouldn't be caring about this code. Look at the documentation and how documentation is saying how it works. I was curious and I couldn't find the developer that would say to me, yes, there is a bug in CSS selectors in some browser. Apparently everything is working quite fine there. And can I use it? It's a page when you can say, see what different functionality of DOM is implemented in browsers. As you can see, everything is green. Okay, so we're going deeper. Basically, CSS selector has a very simple documentation. If you are using selector, you are trying to parse. If there is error, you are having error. If not, you are parsing. How the parsing works? It's basically looking at the grammar. I'm not going to go deeper. I'm not going to talk to about grammar. If you know the, if you are using CSS selectors, you know the grammar. I had to do a cutoff point. This is the cutoff point. I'm not going any deeper. So what basically it means? If you are using the <coughs> Selenium and you are using CSS selectors, ID or something else, it will be using basically the grammar of CSS and it will be working according to this grammar. But there is the XPath. And XPath is another beast. Most important for me was this part. I, I doesn't support XPath. But if any of, of you have ever used the IE web driver, you will notice you can use XPaths there. I have already answered for you. I have no idea how this happened. I look at the code and I couldn't find anything there that would allow it to run the XPath. So for me, that part is magic. To be honest, XPath itself, it's a kind of magic because what it basically does, there is function evaluate where you are giving your starting element if it's a web driver, it will be document, if not the element that you're given. And you have to set up some parameters. Fortunately for us, Selenium, most of these elements is set up as null. What they mean, there are different resolvers. I'm not going into details, but this one is interesting. They are using order to not snapshot type. What this means, at the moment when you are making XPath request, it does snapshot of the page. So your page may change and the XPath won't notice that. That is the biggest problem. And this, I'm not going deeper into the XPath because XPath documentation is bigger than documentation of the web driver and DOM combined. And to be honest, I went mad trying to understand it. So to sum it up, my friend was, was wrong back then, but now he's getting kind of right. Selenium is not finding elements. Selenium is basically asking for them. After all the man in the middle, after removing all these layers, we are basically talking with the DOM and Cypress and other tools that are getting so popular are doing though because Selenium paved the way and the different protocols happened th that they can use them. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Sure. Uh, so you've done all those investigations in scope of your work or in scope of your free time? My Just free time. I was okay. basically, it started as the work. The first part about, you know, the checking the performances, that was work because yeah, sure. we kind of needed this information. Everything else was in my free time. I think I have put something like 160 hours of research into looking in the code, finding the code, talking with the people different in included in the project of the Selenium and reading the documentation. And that was the hardest part. That documentation is nice, but it's not easy to read. Again, in my presentation at the end, you have the link to all the sources if someone wants to check something. 
Any other questions? Oh, yeah, there are some. Uh, so, as a result of your investigation, uh, do we have some difference in between uh, finding elements by ID, by CSS, by uh, name, or XPath only uh, use different way? Right now, there is a difference because there in current implementation is using the document document has the DOM has different function. Like we had, um, I think that will be the easiest way to show it. Oh yeah, this slide. For example, as hmm. okay, uh, as you can see, there is a function called get element by tag name. Previously, right now, the DOM has the function get element by ID, get element by class, and this is what is using. These functions are actually working very similar because. As far as my understanding goes, what they are doing is basically the same thing as the CSS selector with the proper thing, uh, the uh, dot or the um, class. That's why the decision w went that in case of Selenium, they are removing those, uh, uh, those selectors because they are repetitive. They are basically doing the same thing as the CSS selector. It's yes, the XPath is the one that is different. As much as I hate the XPath and the Selenium creators are hating it too, but in my opinion, right now is probably the best way to deal with the shadow roots and right now the web is completely full of the shadow roots. So as much as I would like you to say, don't use XPath, but Selenium doesn't have solution for the shadow root yet. I seen the proposals for them and they are on early stages. I don't think they will be implemented in Selenium 4 at this point. Thank you. Okay. We have next question here. I, I will give my mic. <laughs> this is kind of related to the previous one. So considering this, uh, that Selenium uses only three methods to mm -hmm. find elements, uh, have you ever thought about continuing those experiments and maybe slightly modifying them to find out which one works faster? Actually, what, I'm s s what I was showing you here was a very simplified version because we have looked at the much more complicated locators. You know, right now there are simple cases. so. What my experiment was showing you is the simple cases. It's not a let's say life experiment. When we are doing it in our company, in the company I was working back then, we have used a much more complicated list of the RIs, uh, of the selectors, we are using simple. And basically in most cases, XPath was coming last. In most cases, the in the time that every other selector was finding stuff and he was finding another one, XPath was finding one. As you can see, the times changed. There, the same results are not here. I, I wish I would have the results from their return somewhere so I could uh, compare them exactly value to value. But there are differences. The problem is, as you can see, there was a vari variety between 5 milliseconds to 31. I'm not entirely sure what is coming from this variety. I think it's basically it's running on you know the computer that has other processes running at the same time. We have some issues there. I was talking with my friends from performance and they said that the results are, from their perspective, there are enough difference to notice that there is something going on there, but they're not saying comfortable to saying that there is any problem. Uh, so, short one, uh, follow up. Uh, you considered like doing those performance tests not from Java, but rather from a API level? From like I was thinking about it platform. and maybe if I will have more time, I will do that. But at this moment, I am a little too lazy to do it. I have other projects that I need to finish first before I will move to it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. There was yes, uh, my question. How did you get the idea to use Selenium with Postman? Is there any documentation or... Yes, there is. Actually, the documentation I was showing you here is the documentation for the API. This is documentation how API of web driver should look. So how it show what kind of interface it has for the user and what should be happening here. So you have the algorithm, you don't have implementation here, but here is all these things explained. So when the browser is coming and they want to have Chrome dri the driver for themselves, they're using this. You can have fi find us information here. I was like, basically it was, hey, so this is basically a server with the API. Okay, let's see if I can do it with the postman. Okay, so you have coded this code in Postman, yes? Yes. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay. There was a question. Uh, 
Uh, hi, thanks for your uh, researching. I want to just to add several topics and details. At the second version of driver, uh, Selenium implemented caching of uh, strategy for searching. For example, when you use it previously, uh, XPath or CSS selector, it and uh, n the next search uh -huh. uh, was like by ID, by name, by link, uh, and by tag. It's uh, changing to CSS selector or XPath, dependent on previous search. At third uh, version, it's r this implementation was removed. An additional point that yeah I yeah yeah the cache was here. I removed it from the presentation because it would be even too much complication there. So I thought that this is a detail that didn't actually matter from the perspective of my presentation because we are talking about mostly let's say a first search. Uh, yes, so as you understood, I made pretty the same uh, investigation and I uh -huh. saw that you implemented at C Sharp library for getting a table to object. Yes. Uh, do not do it in, li in this way. Better to use just JavaScript executor for uh, getting your uh, elements that you need for to test. Yeah, um, I both agree with you and I don't agree with you because, yeah, you can do that, but if you ever played with coded UI, um, Studio, it's a tool by Visual yeah, by yeah. the Microsoft. They had one interesting, interesting ideas. They were able to give you the tool for you know. They didn't have the um, interface one for everything. They have specific interfaces for different type of objects with different functionality. The one nice thing of it, I don't have just to find a uh, element I want. I can perform thanks to it an operation specific for the that table. I can yeah if I would like to just find the element. I would do it like the you say, but if I want to do a um, proper operation of this element, I prefer doing it this way. Uh, you can do just uh, marshalling of your JavaScript result to your object. It means that you have model, you have controls that uh, finding elements, and you can uh, get elements like class. I mean, uh, it's much faster. Just about uh, this topic uh, for finalizing it, that when you get uh, elements from table, uh, mm -hmm. and you wanted to get uh, for each element text, it takes a uh, huge time. Really, a lot of time takes because for each element you need to get uh, the same text. Yeah. But you you can uh, execute just one script that uh, can do the same in one operation and much faster. Sure. Maybe I will re-implement it that way later. If I, I will can if make additional comments about it <laughs> for you. Later we can talk. Yep.